Hi guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and I'm here with a favourites video um, today. So I want to talk about some of the books that were my 2016 favourite reads and I have a few different ones I want to talk about and I will get straight into them. So the first book that I wanted to mention was Stay the Distance by Mara de Bricius. This is just a horsey novel about a girl working at a racetrack and her attempts to train this horse and falling in love with this horse. Really really great horsey novel and for horse lovers this one is perfect. It's like YA and and it has all the kind of a really lovely mixture between what you would normally get in a YA, YA contemporary mixed in in a horse world and I was just really happy to find a horsey author that I could follow and read all of her books. The next book I, book I really really enjoyed this year was The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. I just this was just such a really cute fun read. It had dogs, it had a little bit of romance, why a contemporary, a great friendship group and I just really loved how a lot of it played out. I really enjoyed the kind of realistic elements near the end of it um, which I talked about I think in my review or in my wrap up at the time and um, how I felt about it and yeah it was just everything that I needed. I really really enjoy all of Morgan Matson's writing that I've read so far. The next book is one I've mentioned a few times before on my channel and that is Spinning Starlight by Orsi Lewis. This is a sci-fi kind of remap of Han Christian Andersen's um, The Wild Swans and it is about a girl who ends up being alone, her brothers disappear, she's like seven brothers or eight brothers, they all disappear. She's in this sci-fi world that's ruled by technology and she ends up on this other planet that she never knew existed and she's lost the use of her voice and she has to try and get back and try and figure out how to save her brothers and I just loved every moment of this and um, it was really really clever, really well written and again I found another author that I could read all of their work. This book I really enjoyed this year was A Dog's Purpose by W. Bruce Cameron. This is one of my first reads of the year. Um, it was in like the very first week I think and it just, oh my god, I just love this book so much. This is about a dog who keeps being reborn but he remembers all of his past lives and we find, we kind of just uh, travel with him while he goes through all these lives and meets all these different people and experiences so many different things. Um, but at the same time he keeps kind of trying to get back to this one owner who he feels is like his true owner. Um, and it's just so heartwarming, it's emotional, it will like have you laughing and crying and being angry at the world about how they treat dogs and then loving the characters in this who do treat dogs right and it is an absolute must for dog lovers and it's been adapted into a movie which is coming out at the end of the month in the US I think, I'm not sure when it's out in the UK and Ireland but it's out in the States at the end of the month and I cannot wait to see this movie because I think it's going to be so good. Salt of the Sea by Ruta Zepetis was also one of my favourite reads this year. It was just everything I wanted, emotional, historic. Um, I really got really, really attached to some of the characters in this book. They just kind of just took my breath away at some points um, and I absolutely loved it. The thing about Jellyfish by Ali Benjamin was my first review of this year, my first review ever on my channel, I actually think. Um, and it just inspired so much in me. I just was really touched by the story, which is about a girl whose best friend has died and she basically decides that her friend couldn't have had a normal swimming accident which is how she died but she must have been stung by a jellyfish so she gets obsessed with basically learning everything there is to know about jellyfish um, and we kind of just follow her and just everything that she was going through and a lot of things she was going through in school and just these like the way she, she, she was grow, growing up she was kind of on the cusp of becoming a teenager and she was kind of learning things about herself and kind of wondering about you know how these people around her have changed and just like the way even the way they they are socially and how they interact with one another and I just loved like seeing that through her eyes and understanding exactly what she was going through because I feel like I went through the exact same thing when I was younger um, and I just really really identified with this character and I just loved it so much. Asking for it by Louise O'Neill will be one of the reads I read this year that will never ever leave me. This is a book about a girl who is raped um, and just the uh, case that she has to hold up, the, like the stigma then that she has to live with in this little country town for you know kind of um, putting these charges against some of their star uh, football players and there was just so much in this book that impacted me. I found it so difficult to read at times because it was so hard to see what this character was going through and what she was living with all the time um, and I think the fact that it was in Ireland and set in Ireland and kind of it was Irish law um, it just really affected me and I feel like this is a really important book for a lot of people to read. Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo and um, the whole trilogy I guess was some of my favourite books of the year just because I just really was able to dive straight into the trilogy. It was everything that I loved in uh, YA fantasy or just fantasy in general and I was really able to get into the story and just fly through all the books and I love them. 
And I Darkened by Kristen White was also one of my uh, favourites of the year. This is also a YA, YA fantasy slash history retelling where Vlad the Impaler is a woman. Basically just a kick-ass kind of feministic uh, retelling of the story and I just really love the characters. I love the build-up that there was in this book to the next book and I cannot wait for the next book to come out. I think it's called Now I Rise. Um, and yeah, I'm just really, really looking forward to the next book because this book was absolutely brilliant. Theme of Extraordinary Things by Alice Hoffman was one of those books that I didn't think I liked so much until I actually finished it and thought about it for a while and realised how much I had enjoyed the writing. Um, this was just kind of magical and it kind of settled on me. It took me, it took a while for it to settle on me and then I realised, you know, Alice Hoffman's writing is just like that for some reason, for me anyway. Um, I don't realise I'm getting so wrapped up in the story until I'm almost halfway through it um, and I realise I just can't put it down and the characters have kind of settled into my soul and she just has a wonderful way of putting together her words and her stories are just lovely and I really, really, really enjoyed her writing. All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood was probably one of the most different books I've read this year. This is about a relationship between a seven-year-old girl called Wavy and I think he's in his early 20s called Kellen and um, this was just a really extraordinary emotional book that told this really tough story about this little girl and the man who kind of she loved even though it was wrong but at the same time the way this relationship is told you don't feel like it's wrong you feel like it's what they both need and it should be creepy and it, and it should be wrong but it's just it's just not and that's the magic of the story and it just gets into you and I just could not put this down I read and read and read this until I finished it and then I filmed a review of it because I loved it so much it was amazing I loved it I really really recommend people to read this because it's so different and um, to a lot of things that you would read normally and it just it's just so amazing. Peter's Blade by Sebastian de Castell was one of my favourite books of this year as well which is one of my favourite adult fantasy books. It's basically as if The Three Musketeers was set in a fantastical land. It's just so good. It was really really good. The writing was fantastic. The battle scenes in this book are some of the best battle scenes I've ever read in my life. Uh, Sebastian de Castell is a fight choreographer so he really knows what he's talking about. Like you can see, I want this to be a movie just so I can see the battle scenes um, and the fight scenes actually brought to screen because I think they would actually be a magical dance, like they would be amazing. Um, so this is really, really great. I cannot wait to finish the rest of the series this year. In the Hope of Memories by Olivia Rivers was another book that took me by surprise this year. Um, it's a YA contemporary about a girl who has died from um, heart uh, disease and she basically brings all these different friends together for this kind of last treasure hunt that she has set for them and she's basically bringing all these friends together because she knows they need each other and they've never really met each other before they only really know each other through her she's their only connection and it's about these group kind of finding each other and dealing with their grief over their lost friend but dealing with a lot of problems in their own lives as well um, and there's so much I think I feel like there's a lot represented in this book as well we have uh, characters of colour, we have characters with disabilities, both um, physical and mental disabilities um, and just, oh, it's just really really great, I really loved it, this is one that had me kind of crying by the end of it um, and I really really highly recommend it. Glitter by April Lynn Pike had one of the most unique worlds um, for me this year, this is again a YA dystopian um, set in France and it's basically where the Versailles region of France is its own complete kind of little country but the people that live in this country which is basically more or less the palace of Versailles um, while they have a lot of technology they dress and act as if they're still in the 18th century and it's about a girl called Danica and she is betrothed to the king but she does not want to be betrothed to him it's kind of a thing that her mother did to make her become um, his fiance and she's trying to basically desperately escape this life and she ends up in her desperation she ends up selling a drug called glitter within the palace and basically making a lot of people addicted to it and she does it through makeup and it's just kind of her getting enrolled in this really really weird like horrible kind of underworld and trying to escape it and it's really good it was really really good I loved it I gave it five out of five stars it was so enjoyable so different 
um, and I can't wait. This is another uh, sequel that I'm very highly anticipating. My grandmother asked me to tell you She's Sorry Isn't Again, another one of my favourite books this year. This is um, about a girl whose grandmother dies and she basically tells, sets her on this um, errand that she has to go around and deliver all these different letters to these people that live in their apartment block and through this, these letters she ends up kind of getting to know these people and finding out how they're all interlinked and how her grandmother is connected to all of them and learning about their lives and it's just so beautiful, really, really beautifully written. Frederick Backman has, has this amazing power in his writing that he's able to make you kind of laugh and cry at the same time and everything that he writes I've loved. Both of these are just absolutely amazing and they just leave you so kind of feeling warm and lovely inside but at the same time you do kind of want to cry but it's just so good. His writing is just so good. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers is of course on this list because it was beautiful. I really really enjoyed the kind of character driven story that this was. It was kind of a quiet book. The way this world was created, this interspecies world where there's all these kind of aliens with their, all their own different kind of customs and ways of communicating with each other and with other species and how humans kind of fit into all of this and I just thought that was excellent. It was really, really well done and I absolutely loved this book. Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. Um, this is again a sci-fi dystopian book and it is about um, a diabolic called Nemesis. I've basically been trained to be a warrior and a trained killer. She was kind of kind of like a test tube baby I guess and she is basically supposed to protect this senator's daughter and she is sent in the senator's daughter's place to this place where the emperor has sent for her and um, she has to pretend to be human and pretend to be normal and not this kind of trained killer and we have to see her navigate this kind of royal life um, and deal with the emperor and kind of figure out what to do and it was just really good to kind of see her find her humanity and realise she's probably not that different from normal humans and that she can kind of feel and think by herself and I just really enjoyed her personal growth throughout this book and I just really loved her as a character. She's one of my favourite characters of this year. I loved her. Covered Poison by E.S. Thompson is also on the, this list. I did not give this the five stars but I gave it a very, very, very strong four stars. Um, and this is set in the 18th century and it's about a, a apothecary called Jem um, and basically Jem is uh, kind to trying to solve these murders that are happening and this kind of weird mystery um, that they have found and basically Jem is actually a girl um, but for her whole life she's been pretending to be a man um, and this is also kind of this storyline in this book um, Jem's own struggle with her identity, with her gender, um, with her sexuality and I just think it's brilliantly written, really 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 well done. I really enjoyed just the mystery itself was great but for most for most part I just enjoyed Jem as a character which is why this book um, is one of my favourites. The Snow Child by Eowyn Ivy is definitely on my favourites list. This is just absolutely magical. I adored every single moment of this book. Um, this is set in Alaska in the 1920s and it's about a old couple who have no children and they basically make this little girl out of snow and then the next day an actual little girl appears and they start looking after her but she's kind of like half wild and she lives in the wilderness and it's just how she kind of becomes part of their life and how they kind of grow to love her and she grows to love them and it's just oh this book is just spellbinding it's amazing I adored it it's really fast to read perfect read for winter um I loved it and my favorite book of the year was Not Forgetting the Whale by John Ironmonger you guys have heard me rave about this book before but I absolutely oh this book is just so good um this is about a man who shows up I think in this little tiny village I think it's in Wales um and he basically is trying to say this computer he built um for the stock markets which is kind of able to predict things has predicted that this major virus is going to break out in the world and he is trying to convince this village that this thing is happening and he's trying to protect them basically and save them and um it's just about how they deal with that and then how how things progress then and it's just oh, it's just it's a, such a lovely story it's about people sticking up for each other and helping each other and loving each other and it just leaves you so it just leaves you loving people who are like that and seeing a little bit of good in the world rather than all the bad because I feel with these kind of stories there's so much badness normally where this was the complete opposite and there's just so much loveliness and 
oh this left me in tears by the end of it I got my dad to listen to it on audio tape he was crying at the end of it it's just one of those books that tugs at your heartstrings and I just loved it and I actually want to reread it I want to get my own copy um because I just need it on my shelves and um, so that's something I need to do this year some of these are my favorites I don't have them uh Act for physical copies and they do need to get them so those are all the books uh, that I thought were some of my favourites this year please let me know what you think what some of your favourite books this year was this is kind of probably a long video but I couldn't I've read so many books I've read like 270 books this year so I couldn't really just bring that down to 10 because that would be impossible so those are my top like 20 something books this year um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video I'll see you guys again next time bye